Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, on twos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, Unreal Engine 4 in my web browser. Turns out, it's more likely than you might think, and Feral has added some new games to that wacky Feral radar of theirs, because we're still doing that in 2018, guys. The new Vive is going to cost mad ducats, so let's talk about Valve's Gull, and Godot hits 3.0. Let's see what new stuff they have to show. Spool up the rumor mill, Microsoft is coming and they're buying your cat. And NVIDIA really done goofed on their drivers, it's actually jarring to see just how good they usually are versus this one. I'm Vince Stone here at LGC Actual, switching the bits, doing the nightmare fuel from our um, crazy, crazy, psychopathic uh, little studio, joined every week by our Toronto correspondent. You know him. You love him. One master swing in the Portuguese man of war via Britannia. One Pedro Mateus joining us live with Shat Realm Dynamic, helping us form uh, that last special little bit known as Cocaine Voltron. Lads, before we get started, we do like to see... What has been going on since last week? Pedro, do you have anything fun to report? No, not yet. That's I'm brilliant. Still Jordan, what have you been up to? looking for that one Chromebook. Ah, well, <laughs> I, I decided it was a smart idea to sleep with the window open. So I woke up with throat gremlins. So you're going to hear me coughing and hacking and also making other noises with my face hole. What about you, Ven? I hear... Uh, you had some adventures in Driverland, man. I've uh, we'll talk about that in the um, news segment about the driver, but yeah, man, I've been using um, Foxfire a lot. Uh, more on that later. Kind of killed the Chrome, also killed the Jack. We we are not coming to you over Jack right now. We're we're back on the Pulse Audio because I I got tired of fighting this stupid monkey thing, and um, I found a way because I completely reversed our entire audio tool chain. Um, to make everything work with that. So, uh, yeah, uh, that, that's thing. But no you, fire. You know, you know what else is killed though? The horse. Cause we beat it to death with our sticks. It's the steam. Linux. Evil grapefruits. Yeah. Microsoft's coming and they're buying everybody around. Uh, well, not really. This is just the rumor mills. Spool up the rumor drive, whatever you want to do. Just uh, don't uh, go out and start a suicide pack or anything. Because there was a bit of a rumor that Microsoft might be looking... Well, this, this bit wasn't a rumor. Uh, Phil Spencer, the head of uh, Xbox Live and... Uh, Basically, the gaming division at Microsoft, he said that, uh, well, Microsoft are looking to acquire um, more gaming publishers and developers and bring them into the fold so they can at least have some more games coming out of the Xbox One, because apparently it's not doing too good. Go figure. Um, so people started talking and the rumor started to spread that they might be looking into buying EA, they might be looking into buying PUBG, they might be looking into buying Valve. Yes, Valve of all things. It's like, no. <laughs> well, man, no, I think the Valve thing, A, Gabe wrote back, uh, forget it, I just showed that on the stream. It's like, oh, are you guys on the Twitters and Valve's, uh, Valve's Gabe's? Wrote back. He's like, not that I'm aware of. So rumor mill, I could see them picking up maybe PUBG because remember, this is the same company that bought uh, Minecraft. Uh, Mojang. So, Mojang. Mojang. And uh, made Notch a billionaire. I'm sure he's all still happy about that. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe EA. EA. Living. Well, the thing about Valve, the thing about Valve is it's not a publicly traded company. So I don't see Gabe giving that up mm-hmm. or wanting anything to do with I, I th- Microsoft. I think a hundred percent though, that this whole Microsoft buying valve thing, it, it, it's just like a piece of fiction that resonates with people, right? Because it's kind of the worst case scenario. If PC gaming quite literally gets monopolized by one company and it being Microsoft EA seems like a likely acquisition though. Um, that would give the Xbox mm-hmm. some much needed exclusives. Uh, additionally, it gives them um, what was it um, Origin, so for they can they could strip yeah. mine some tech for a game distribution service. 
Um, but again, this this is this is all speculation. We gotta we gotta spin the wheel of booga booga, and um, uh, yeah, yeah so I we're, really we're gonna see what happens surprised if Microsoft. I really wouldn't be surprised if Microsoft just ended up acquiring a major AAA publisher as a result of these rumors, or they had already planned on it. Probably not going to be Valve, uh, but you know, yeah, Origin from EA, uh, Uplay if they bought Ubisoft, Battle.net if they bought Activision. Uh, that, that would be something. Mm. It could happen, mm. but... Uh, let, let's save up our money because getting face fucked by those Smurfs is going to be expensive, yo. Smurfy toasters, indeed. <laughs> this is uh, from the road to road to VR. Uh, links to all this stuff in our show notes. So, um, apparently, this dude by the name of Scarred Ghost, because we all picked our internet ham- handles in the late nineties, and we all regret them. Um, he got a, he got a chance to speak to uh, the HTC uh, president. Uh, Alvin Graylin, and they're talking a bit about um, they're talking about what uh, to expect from the new version of the Vive, the Vive Pro, as it were. And it looks like uh, it's going to be priced in around the 1K and above range because they're doing the 2560 by 1880 screens now. They got the integrated wireless kit and all that stuff. So, I mean, I, I totally expect this to be one of those situations where this will totally be the better product. It will 100% be the um be the better VR experience that no one's gonna buy because you can pick up an Oculus Rift for three hundred bucks now. You can grab a probably used Vibe or a Vi- not a Vibe. You can buy grab a used Vibe for like five bucks. Depends on like what street corner you go to. Get a used Vibe um for in around that uh, price area as well. And then again, it's also the fact that people uh, who are wanted to dip their toes into VR have already done so. They're not going to be in a hurry to blow another thousand plus dollars on a new headset. Well, I think that's another thing, man. I mean, as soon as you yeah. start tapping on that one thousand mark, then you're like, ooh, especially people who dropped eight hundred wet stinky caches doing that. And if we gotta 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 compound it, I, I genuinely think, Pedro, that we're like two or three generations away from you know, like a mass consumed product for your face organ TM. And it's not like you're going to yeah. be able to find and or afford a video card to power the damn thing. <laughs> well, uh, if Bitcoin or in most cryptocurrencies keep dipping in price, like they have been lately, maybe you'll be able to find one at that point. Maybe assuming there's not another bubble that happens at some time in the future, which brings it back up. But this one though, there is really no price uh, that's been confirmed uh, or even mentioned. Uh, there is some healthy speculation, as the article mentions, but uh, yeah, they mentioned the Vive for Business is twelve hundred bucks, and the original Vive, as uh, you already mentioned, was um, eight hundred bucks. Mm. So, they, they, if they really want something that has that mass consumer appeal, they're going to have to bring down the price. Because that's a now, hell of there, a lot of money there's, on top of there's, very expensive PC. There's also the, the the 4D chest perspective in which they're putting this out for the pro market so that um, guys like the military or sci- uh, like some sort of high-end R&D that can actually benefit from using VR as like an actual training tech uh, starts using it. Mm-hmm. They figure out how to get the price down, something, something, something. And then, like Ben said, in one or two generations with that all that... Um, real world like business case experience they can build a much better cheaper product but we don't know um also another thing we don't know is what this fucking program does nope not a fucking clue man i mean none at all <laughs> it's called steam forder and it's a steam api dll implementation for wine your windows games now can interact with your linux steam and uh we're, we're just kind of what does it mean uh, that that's all it says. Well, it's got a big honking disclaimer on it and some restrictions. We're just kind of putting it out to chat realm. Maybe you guys know what it needs and what it does. It ties in with wine something? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Thoughts? Uh, I guess see, based on... I'm reading... Uh, well, like, I, I read through this oh, thing, sure. like, for a, a good, like, 30 minutes or so. Just trying to, like... Find something that indicates what its function is. And I guess if you're running like native Linux Steam and you have like a game that um, that can run standalone outside Steam, but also has like the Steam DLL, you can use this to do some DLL injection to trick that wine game into talking with your 
native Steam, but I don't know how that works if like you have a pirated copy of the game or something that you don't actually own on your account. Is Valve gonna be like, oh, what the fuck are you doing, son? You're not allowed to go on our service anymore. You're trying to uh, steal trading cards from children. Actually, reading this all over again, uh, the answer seems to be much simpler than that. Uh, it what it does is it lets your uh, native Linux Steam client download and play uh, the games which are Windows only. Now, there is an issue uh, with some games, and it won't work with any games that have any third-party DRM on top of, like, Steamworks. Um, so those won't work, and they also actively recommend so... that you don't allow Steam to update those games since they are Windows games and the updates might actually fuck with the little DLL so, injection so thing that it's basically doing. this automates... This does some fancy DLL injection, but essentially automates setting up like a runner in Steam to like launch Wine Steam and play your game. Yeah, it lets you download the game and install the game directly from the Linux client, even if it's a game which doesn't support. Uh, I, 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 I mean, like as, as, as much as I hate to side with um, our ch our uh, local cheese eating surrender monkey, at that point I'm just gonna say <laughs> go go knock on Lutris's door. Because mm -hmm. that'll, that'll do it and slap a nice little yeah. gooey in front of it and <laughs> won't get you back there. Yeah, I mean, it could definitely be a thing or an issue. I don't know. I, I, it just seems like you're uh, p poking the back band hammer, and that, that's not something you really want to do. But, hey, man, go go experiment. Uh, if you got some thoughts, send us some feedback on it, and let us know why it is a super cool, awesome tool. We would like to know. So, um, <laughs> Hollow Knight got another update, and it's all free and stuff? Another one. Oh, yeah. And it's got a bunch of new content as they're off to do. See, these guys, these guys are setting a very good example. I just wish more people on Steam would actually follow it. It's Hollow Knight Gods and Glory. And it brings a new character and quest. Uh, the God Seeker arrives. Uh, there's new boss fights. Of course there is. Uh, new game mode, which you only unlock after you complete the Gods and Glory story bit that comes with the new patch. Uh, there's new music. The uh, composer Christopher Larkin. Uh, they say he's going all out for the final free pack. So I'm guessing this. Is final. <coughs> uh, and they also have more charms and just teeny tiny bug fixes here and there. Nothing major because uh, let's face it, that fixes. was a game which it. not only work, <laughs> not only worked really really well, but it proved that the Unity engine can be both beautiful and have tight controls <laughs> i mean we've known that for a while um unity is a great tool if people just use the default stuff and put no effort into it then yeah you're gonna have a mm -hmm. subpar looking and playing game what i learned recently is that hollow knight apparently has romance options because it's a metroidvania dating sim mm -hmm. question mark i didn't know about that and i was looking I around and um <laughs> no uh, maybe it does. Hollow Knight's a great game, price to sell. We fucking love it, and um, these—they're they're just delivering. I'm, I think I—we're gonna do our best to get a hold of what? Team Cherry and see if we can get them on the show to have mm -hmm. a chat about. Yeah, like how much? How, 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 so for for six for seventeen Canadian bucks, you get a lot of game. Like, yeah, there's a just so lot. much content. It will it will take <laughs> you like knocking on around a hundred hours to go through all of it. Yeah, I got like 80 in it, and basically what Team Cherry has done, at least for me, is I, I don't give a fuck what their game next game is. I'm going to buy it out of principle, man. It'd be like a Crow Team game, you know? I was like, I'm just mm -hmm. going to buy it. Mm -hmm. So that's, Bunch of freaking crazy people. They really did a good one with this, with uh, Hollow Knight. So kudos, Team Cherry. Looking forward to your next thing. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to it. So uh, Team Cherry to Space Friends. Um, Pararumi, man, this, the name for this game. Pararumi. Pararumi. Is out. Update number five. It's all official and shit. Yeah, man, they've straight up blown out of early access, which made me really happy when you consider that this entered early access around November of last year. We're talking 2017. And mm -hmm. it's a baked game three or so months later. It is out. It is bullet hell. It is shooty. And, um... I say good on them. What are we at? Sixteen ninety nine too. So it's definitely a thing, and it's really pretty, and it has some fucked up mechanics in it that 
I'm going to enjoy torturing Jordan with. Um, oh yeah, no, I'm 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 so excited about this. I get to stretch my shmup muscles. I love playing shoot 'em ups and bullet hells. They don't stress me out at all. No sir, being surrounded by things <laughs> totally doesn't trigger my claustrophobia at all. No, but I mean, good on them, right? They they did a good. They released their game in early access to get a bunch of feedback to improve the final product, which they shipped in three months, which is the way to go about mm -hmm. it. Not just, oh, we're, I'm, I'm going to put this game on the store and then you're going to buy it and fund my development. These guys actually have a mostly finished product that they put out there. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're, they're doing a good and they deserve some recognition. And I guess we're throwing chairs at it next week. Awesome. Mm, I didn't have any plans on it, but maybe. I mean, I mean, I mean they, they gave us some copies. <laughs> they did. Or no, actually, uh, still, still that gave no. us some copies. Oh, still that gave us copies. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone gave us some copies. Hey, man! Since people Sorry. are handing out free copies, let's talk about some Rocket League roadmap 2018. Why should I care? Woo! Uh well, they have a bunch uh, of stuff they're listing out. This is what's going to happen in spring 2018. They're going to start the uh, competitive season seven. They're going to hand out the rewards. They're going to add some new loot crates for, you know, that sweet, sweet, not gambling, gambling that uh, the kids are so <laughs> into these days. Uh, apparently in March, April, they're going to add a bunch of quality of life updates too, like item stacking and uh, some better paint options and some uh, network info as well. So Foxy can see how, how bad his internet connection is and how well he's kicking our asses given such network drops. Uh, they also have some Switch stuff that I'm not going to talk about because I don't own Rocket League on the Switch and therefore don't care about it. And apparently, yeah, that, that, that's that's pretty much it. They're going to improve uh, cross-platform party matching as well, uh, which is it's it's a nice thing because we're all on the same internet now. It's it's one 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 internet, many many platforms. We should just be able to play games with each other. Now, the big thing here is actually the tournaments. Uh, they are going into beta this month. So if you see a big update show up for Rocket Car as well, another one, uh, probably might want to pop in and see what the tournaments are all about. Uh, Foxy in the uh, comments in the show notes was like, yay, tournaments, can we have an LGC tournament now, please? But yeah. Well, we will probably most likely put it to the test. They will have a public beta coming uh, this month. And hopefully they're hoping by late March, early April, they'll have the tournaments available, not in beta form. So hopefully it'll be baked by then. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it. I, I enjoy reading these updates about I was like, look at all this cool shit in rocket cars. What are you going to do with it, Vin? Uh, I, I, I'm going to play on the after show and try to make contact with the ball and call it a night because boop the ball boop it <laughs> yeah that's kind of how i roll with that business but um no uh, definitely glad to see it I'm, I'm fumbling around trying to i just realized some things were off kilter i say good on them and uh it's really i'm gonna tell you what i really like the most about rocket cars is Showing that you can make Unreal Engine through very performant if you know what you're doing because that one guy did it. And there's proof. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hashtag Dotsies. So All right. speaking speaking of blips. <laughs> this is a thing, man. Feral Interactive. They tweeted out on the internet. Incoming projectiles. No, nowhere near as kinky as where your mind first went. But they say take cover, false alarm, whatever. One from Mac OS, the other from Mac OS and Linux. Nothing to see here. Nope. Move along. They got a little radar with a bunch of shit at the very, very far out end of it because um, we're still doing this in 2018. Come on. I, I, I bet you a nickel. It's just like another total snore game. Uh, I don't know. My, my real question is, is like since the release of uh, F okay. Well, yeah. F1 2017, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All those games, Everything that's been on that radar has been on the quite soon, which is the back ass end of um, the radar. So it's something that they may or may not be ready to announce and may change at any point. <laughs> right. Where are the games at? So it's but yeah, it's what I'm asking. Spoiler sight machine. Yeah. What I'm asking is War Tomb Raider or Rise of the Tomb Raider to be more specific. I wouldn't even mind uh, Shadow of War or Shadow of the Store, like some people have uh, taken to calling it. Not exactly the microtransaction buying type of guy, but I'm pretty.
pretty sure I'd still enjoy the game if it came out on the Linuxes. I wouldn't be against it, not at all, but uh, yeah, uh, if we all know it's going to be that Life is Strange bullshit. Listen, I know somebody likes Life is Strange, but it's like the interactive uh, movie of angst and teenagerness. Mm-hmm. So it's it's just not my jam. I'd like the Tomb Raiders. If they're doing it, we don't know. Um, Jordan, what, what about you? Like I said, I'm I'm convinced that it is going to be another total snore. Maybe maybe another uh, racing rally type game. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Um, Fer- mm-hmm. Feral periodically does this thing on like the Twitters and the Reddit. It's like, what games do you want to see us ported? And everyone just loses their goddamn mind. And oh realize man, that, yeah, you know, I got kind of restricted by their licenses. Get with you on that because the mm-hmm. I feel bad for the PR person. Like, what games would you like to see us port? And I was like, give me one example of you porting something that was requested by the community that wasn't fucking obvious that you were going to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it, so it's it's probably going to be a Square or a Sega game because that seems to be Feral's leisure domain. But um, mm-hmm. I, I I don't know. We I think we need to get back on uh, track. Choo choo, motherfuckers. Uh, so this is Railway Empire, and um, yeah, they say something about exploiting the economic o- opportunities of the United States. Yeah, I'm going to hit the eject button right there. That's just a little too too spicy for me. Mm-hmm. Now, so if you're missing uh, Ticket to Ride on Linux, um, which was that railway board game that um, got a Linux port that then they stopped supporting because apparently Linux is too hard. This is a more involved grand strategy economic spreadsheet simulator where you basically build a railroad and you compete against three other people and uh, get to get to live out your 310 to Yuma fan fiction, whatever mm. it may be. Um, it has some modest system requirements. Uh, apparently you can run this on the last gen uh, Thubens, which is, or the last gen Thubens is like a freaking um, coming up on 10 year old CPU now. So right. that's, that's saying something. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a game about trains. It's priced at 60 bucks. So you better really fucking like trains. You better be going as Adams up. In That's what I, I was uh, reading through the description until I scrolled down and it's like 49 wet stinky American caches. Oh, fuck that. I mean, listen, um, simulation games and stuff like that. Yeah. You can get away with naming your price because the type of people like those games will pay it because where, where else are you going to go? Um, Pedro, uh, I mean, it's it's by the same publisher that did all the Tropicos and whatnot. So, yeah. mm-hmm. I did like the uh, the little cinematic thingies that they have. Once you build a line and you get a train going, you can actually quote unquote ride the train and follow it along and see everything. And the graphics, okay, they're not spectacular, but they look pretty good. And that's usually more than you see in these uh, these types of games that are more focused on the spreadsheet management aspect than anything else. So, good on them. Mm -hmm. Coming up next, We Were There, No, We Were Here, Uh, the sequel. We were, yep, Mm -hmm. to the um, (laughs) other game called We Were Here. And this one is a uh, multiplayer cooperative uh, puzzle-solving game. I would not, uh, I would say probably not too dissimilar from Portal in terms of, like, gameplay, not necessarily the puzzle mechanics, but... Well, I guess you could say it's oh, like yeah, person X has to go maybe here, portal to with an thing. emo skin pack on mm-hmm. it, maybe. You're like uh, <laughs> dark medieval times. It, it's it's a straight up sad Heracon album here. Um, but you know what? The, the the one thing that sort of piqued my interest here is they're saying that there's asymmetrical gameplay between the two people who are cooperating, and I'm all about asymmetrical gameplay because I think it's this place, it's space in gaming that isn't really explored as much as I feel it should be. So at the very least, I can say if it's if it's what was it nine bucks might be might be decent for a stream, mm-hmm. you know. Yep. Some watch us yell at each other and like scream profanities. It's gonna be fun. I like the whole idea of having a cooperative puzzle game. Until I started to realize that basically everyone I know around me and on the internet that would be up for playing a video game with me are a bunch of assholes. So <laughs> that will be fun. <laughs> Last but not least, we must delve for deeper. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, it's Delver. And if you're like me and you're looking at those graphics and... You're probably going, wait, there's already a, 
a game like that on Steam. Yes, it's called One More Dungeon. I too had that very same moment, but this is made by a completely different team, and I had some issues with uh, One More Dungeon. Hopefully, and I am. This is a very big hope because I very much like this old faux retro style of thing. It's yeah, sure, it's hipster pixel, but it's no longer the eight bit or the sixteen bit kind of crappy hipster pixel. It's like the early 3D stuff that wasn't actually 3D. Uh, so maybe this one will be better. I hope. I don't know, man. I was looking at this and it gave me like a Fight Night vibe. You know? Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe with a little bit of a touch of Ziggurat too. Mm-hmm. Or with the procedural generation yeah. and the first person mm-hmm. man of the sea stuff. Uh, I mean, it's it, know, it's it's a thing. It's priced to, it's it's not quite priced to sell because it's seventeen fifty Canadian. I don't know what your no. local yeah fourteen ninety nine. Um, you know, even when they're in three D hipster pixel, eleven thirty nine pounds. Yeah, it looks very competently done. It, it's not lazy hipster pixel. It's mm-hmm. clearly a style choice. But yeah, uh, mm-hmm. try try it. Give it a try. System requirements or like use Ubuntu or um, good good luck with that. And um, I can respect that because we'll definitely be talking about system requirements in the news section. Speaking of, oh man, we got we got lots to talk about. There's like some shitty Nvidia drivers. Some game engine got released, and a previously sixty thousand dollar piece of software is free. Find out what it is coming up soon. Well, if you were not watching us live, you missed the longest of um, mid-segment breaks because, well, stuff got on fire and we couldn't put it out. Uh, We tried, but hey, if you'd like to prevent further fires to happen in Ven's little studio, what he's got going on there, you can do so by heading on over to linuxgamecast.com and hitting the support button. Jordan, tell the lovely people what they can do there. I mean, you, you could do that. You could peruse all of the links, including Amazon affiliate links, Newegg affiliate links, Humble affiliate links, an Amazon wish list, some PayPal links, even even a Bitcoin QR code. But, you know, that, that would make you as cool as the people who... Uh, it would still make you cool, though. Not as cool as the people who head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast and support us through that nonsense. Because they get all sorts of interesting stuff, like Discord access. They get access to the show notes. They can even sometimes contribute to the show notes. Uh, you get some mm-hmm. uncut VODs three days early. You get to play with us if we have if we have need of additional players. And if you're uh, financially responsible enough, hell, you can even buy yourself a seat on the goddamn show. That's why we got that uh, Ryzen, so that we could make our space heater support hosting more than yeah. three people at a given time. Uh, we got, we got, we got, uh, what was, what was it? 109 Patreons giving us 219 a week. We just, we, mm-hmm. uh, recently smashed through our last Patreon goal where I, uh, we played through serious Sam on hard mode. That's all done coming up next. If we can make it to 250, we get a merch run and we, we got a couple new things on the board. Cause you could, uh, a little bit after that, you can get HD RSS feed for, um, video for Linux weekly daily Wednesday, that Wednesday show that then, Jordan and possibly soon if we make it to that other Patreon goal, uh, Miss Jill Linux Chicks um, person, yeah, that that that, <laughs> that lady who shows up in chat rolls, um, we'll join them. Uh, rounding it out to three, it's the best replacement for Strider we could ever ask for. Well, let's let's be real, mm-hmm. any replacement for Strider is a uh, one up. And you know, even even if we make it to a thousand, we might even move on to uh, at uh, Atlanta because you know Atlanta. Ven loves picking up all his shit and moving. You could inflict that on him, and that would be kind of miserable, wouldn't it? But we got some lovely new people to thank. We got Daniel Y and Corey K. Thank you so much for supporting it, and thank us all of you. Because I, I guess are we gonna cut over to Frank's fuck cam? <laughs> Frank Frank's fuck cam had to go to go down, man. <laughs> Frank's fuck cam had to go down. All right. Well, uh, if, you, if you give us some uh, hardware goodies from the uh, from the Amazon wish list, you can also end up. On Frank's fuck cam, on his fuck wall, his walls. Be our fuck buddies. Hey man, um, I definitely want to show this off. Uh, the Merit Series Power Conditioner that actually showed up from our fine upstanding cannibals off of our wish zone. Mm-hmm. One uh, Jerulio picked that up. Thank you, sir. You are on the fuck wall 2.0, which I might cut into post because we actually had uh, Frank's new action cam up and running. That could have been what took us down, but. 
That's enough shelling ourselves out. Thanks, everyone. Let's get into some driver's news, because I know, I know you're looking forward yes. to that. Yes. Well, it's been a while. It's certainly been a long while since NVIDIA properly, and I do mean properly, cocked up a driver. We're not talking about, oh, one certain EDID of a certain monitor doesn't get detected, or, ooh, there's a teeny tiny issue with the whatever. This one, this one was proper fucked. The entire th- uh, 390 series was proper fucked. Uh, if, if you watched the show a couple of weeks ago, you may have heard Ven complain about uh, the um, 390.12 beta not working with his multiple X screens. But now there's a 390.25, which is supposed to be the stable version, and they do claim to have fixed a couple of regressions uh, with that very same beta, but they didn't fix all of them. Ven, you want to talk about it? Hey, man. uh, It's got issues, okay? Mm -hmm. Kind of like what we talked about on wednesday and that's something it's like shit don't work yo uh, the three what was it uh 319 390 12 those are dog shit didn't work at all couldn't get those working with 415 mm-hmm. the dot 25 what they released as stable Mm-mm. nope no no love whatsoever there's a ton of jank there's jank everywhere and um, I actually had to go back to Kernel 414 and the 380 drivers in order to do this show because I was tired of fucking fighting with it for the past three, four days. And like things like Chrome, like they've made Chrome a little bit better with an update yesterday that kind of makes it feel like you're not running on a single core uh, AMD CPU from a decade ago. And um, mm-hmm. it's pretty nasty pretty nasty jordan you didn't have any issues though man it actually made everything faster for you right absolutely because i do this thing where i wait a couple days before upgrading my driver to see if uh, people lose their shit and lo and behold that behavior paid off so what the hell am i on now as i scramble to get the nvidia settings up uh (laughs) some 380 something what is it oh i'm shit i'm on 390 12 and i'm not having any real issues so but i'm on but i'm on kernel 414 so that is a thing. Uh, but some other, some other Linux related stuff happened this week um, in regards to a, a game engine that we have been shilling and supporting. Godot 3.0 mm-hmm. is out. Um, it's been a long time coming. We've been covering their updates, their release candidates. Uh, and now finally we're in a spot where Godot is now actually a decent 3D engine for your use. It's entirely open source. You can do whatever you want with it. One of the cool things that was a consequence of open source is because of the um, because of their dual licensing scheme, uh, they can't uh, set up um, they can't set up uh, port export abilities for other consoles, but other companies can and have been doing that. So if you want to make your game and make it available on the wide variety of platforms, you know, might be the tool for you. Uh, some of the features like uh, the C sharp work um, C, or C sharp support work, uh, but there's still stuff that is going to be pushed back or improved in Godot 3.1. There's a big API break with their 3D stuff, but that's to make room for all their cool stuff, like uh, physicality-based 3D render principle, BDF, BSDF, not BDSM, <laughs> goddamn, global illumination, um, mid and post processing. Um, they have o- they have improved OBJ support. They support that GLTF uh, 3D scene that is the Chrono standard, um, and they have some brand new shader language that makes it a little easier. It's all based on GLSL to construct your 3d stuff the links to all this is in the show notes it's super awesome you should take a look at it if you are thinking of making a game because now it's not just for 2d shit anymore you can do you can do a 3d boy yeah uh i was reading through the post and i read a little bit it's like a year ago we decided to skip the release of Godot 2.2 which uh would have included new multiplayer networking i was like why well, why would you skip that? Uh, so then Foxy, again, in the comments, uh, was like, uh, they already have network multiplayer. They just wanted to improve it. But uh, instead of improving on a base that they weren't too keen on, they basically now have decided to consolidate what they have. And with this new fresh base, they can now start adding all the new stuff and improving uh, on the uh, multiplayer networking that they that they were working on. So, 
I'm actually glad to hear that. Yeah, I'm going to say at the end of the day, good on them. I'm glad that they're rocking on with this. And it's just think like the year and a half, maybe two years we've been covering this. It has made mm-hmm. genuine, genuine progress. And it's a real boy. It's a viable option to make your game with. They also have a Patreon, so go check them out and maybe kick them a shekel or two. Uh, yeah, they're, 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 they're close to hiring another full-time dev or dev 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 Oh, right. Uh, what the hell is a Ticey and why is it at one point? Uh, it's it's weeb garbage. No, um, people seem to like this Toho <laughs> genre of game. It's a shmup involving lolicon girls that are supposedly thousands of years old so that they don't get carted off by Chris Hansen. But uh, Taisei <laughs> is an open source uh, reimplementation of, um, or not reimplementation, open source reinterpretation of Toho style games. So you can play them in an open source sort of way um i've been aware of the toho i guess genre but not much else it's mm-hmm. nice to see there's uh there's an open source option they have a github uh did anyone try building this fuck no uh no uh i tried one of the first tohos that was made for like windows proper and i didn't have a really good experience i did like the music though it's like that stupidly electronic japanese music that just it just assaults your brain and make it just forces your brain to shut everything else down just while it tries to process that music i guess that's why i like it because it cuts everything else off so if this has well, that they, maybe they i'll give it a shot they, they have a new release out this is uh version 1.2 got released on the 27th uh, they got new sound. They got a new original soundtrack, sound effects, uh, redone story dialogue, mm-hmm. ending text, uh, revamped shots, blah, blah, blah. You can check all this out. If that is your bag, you can definitely go and compile it yourself. Maybe it's in your AWR or a- AUR, rather. AWR. Or <laughs> whatever. I'm going to stop talking. Ben, Arr. next story. Hey, man. People are estranged when you are estranged. The demo, HTML5. And you're like, yeah, demo, but what? Using Unreal Engine for this coming from PC perspective. And yeah, I had to go give it a Pepsi challenge. Can't really show it because it would probably bring the system down because it's kind of loaded up right now. But, you know, it's compiling from C to WebAssembly. It's a pretty big download. Uh, you know, it's less than a gig, but it does start. And I worked uh, with Firefox Quantum, so 56, and all that. Didn't try it with Chrome because it's a busted piece of jank right now. And, uh, <laughs> It, it looks really all right, considering it's coming over your fucking web browser and the damn thing runs and it runs on Linux. So I definitely got to give it that. Not the most graphically intense thing you're ever going to see. It's not. But still, very impressive to me. And I just want to sit back and say, behold the future of gaming in five to oh, six yeah. years, kids. <laughs> this, is, this is how it's going to go Prepare down. Prepare to have like the torrent of Electron games just hit Steam the moment that this becomes easy enough to do. Yeah, uh, well... Uh, I mean, the, the thought of that makes my penis hurt. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> you, you need to get that looked at. I mean, you, then you wouldn't be so <laughs> yeah. lonely. Yeah, I mean, yeah, just... yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 you and me both, buddy. You and me both. <laughs> Coming up next, man. Crow team, they're they're back, uh, back to gaming, as it were. Uh, the guys from there uh, had a little chat with um, what 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 is this person's name? Um, back they, to they, gaming. Uh, uh, they, they, they they didn't they didn't they just said Crow team. Doesn't matter. Anyways, uh, so they are talking about uh, Crow team and how they um, have supported Linux in the past, um, and just why cross platform uh, development makes your life easier. They they one of the quotes from the article is we've upgraded our engine and made it so that it's easy to make all ports to all platforms of our interests. Which again, we've been screaming this for years because there's no longer going to be oh there's there's issues on this platform because it's in the engine. If you fix it in one place, it'll get fixed in other places, and it's just a great way of reducing the total amount of work you need to do. It's more cost efficient in the long run. Um, when asked about um, the sort of struggles of supporting Linux, uh, they gave a somewhat questionable answer because they say general lack of interest in playing video games on Linux is the first variable or first barrier and the huge amount of fragmentation. And it's a little sad that um, 
that's still being brought up because snaps exist, flat bags exist, Docker exists. All of these tools for essentially just shipping everything you need with the application do exist, make fragmentation kind of a non-issue. And then you kind of agree in the sense that um, you can just say, we're just supporting this one distro, yeah? Well, that's it. I mean, that's something I've been screaming long before SteamOS came out. And anytime I ever talk to a game developer, they're like, yo, hey, I searched for Linux games. I kind of found you. It's even before we were doing this show. And it has always boiled down to the fragmentation is just a bullshit try to get out of jail free card that people like to throw out because, listen, there's an operating system built just for gaming called Steam OS. It's based on Debian. Target that. Don't support anything but that. Or you can do what Feral does. Pick the latest version of Ubuntu. Target mm. that. Support that. And when somebody walks in, they're like, but my Arch distro with Rat Poison window manager. And they're like, yeah, that that's neat. Uh, oh, we, we like the color blue because it doesn't say we support that. Have fun. Which <laughs> is not necessarily cruel because all you got to do is hop over to the discussion forum. There's going to be a ton of people that will help you get it up and running. So, yeah, there's nothing wrong with picking a distribution, supporting that. It's Again, you don't have to go down to the Linux store and buy the Linux box. And the... the- the, or, the other the other thing that kind of rubbed me the wrong way, too, was general lack of interest in playing video games on Linux. Most of the people who are on Linux want to be able to play games on it. And I know a lot of people on yeah. Windows are kind of fed up with Windows 10. And were there a viable alternative that could play the vast majority of their games, mm-hmm. may consider switching. I mean, you, you got to take them, you got to sort of get rid of that Stockholm Syndrome stuff. But at the same time, if you provide a compelling enough platform, people will come. It's and true. for all its shortcomings, the Steam runtime was a good idea. It's it's not an OS that you're targeting. It's a specific set of libraries that gets shipped and installed with Steam in every single distro. And if you compile your game to run against that, chances are it's going to work on every single distro that lets you install Steam. Now, it had its flaws, obviously, but it was a good idea. It Come on! <laughs> I don't know. At the end of the day, it is, even if it's not 100%, maybe there's a logical argument to be made. It is becoming more and more a desperate argument. If you don't want to do a Linux port, say, hey, man, I don't want to do a Linux port. Just, you you can't drag this out like you could in the past. So, uh, Vulcan, Klingons, Kronos, I don't know, man, this is confusing. This is about OpenGL. OpenGL 4.6. Yeah, the weird one. The one that... People were like, why are you doing this when Vulcan's a thing? Or whatever. Well, uh, this is the OpenGL 4.6 adopters program that they're trying to get people interested in and joining uh, the effort to make OpenGL 4.6 uh, compliant in all the hardware that currently supports uh, OpenGL 4.5. And they have a few people on board already. They have Intel, uh, which say that the latest four generations of Intel Core processors are able to deliver OpenGL 4.6. That's great. Uh, NVIDIA says that they have already uh, made a driver available that is completely conformant with their tests uh, for OpenGL 4.6. And there's also David Early, which uh, you may know because we keep talking whenever we talk about Rad V or anything of the sort. Uh, it's the name that keeps popping up, and he's on board, and he says uh, he more than welcomes the um, OpenGL 4.6 adopters program. So it's good to see an actual Linux face uh, supporting the project, and and you can actually download the um, VKGL CTS, which runs all the tests. Uh, it ta- it's a sizable uh, Git repository, and it take it took almost two minutes on the Ryzen 5 1600 w- with the Make J13. Took almost two minutes to compile the whole thing, uh, but I guess that the 390.25 drivers from Nvidia aren't really the fully compliant ones that uh, Bob Pete from no, NVIDIA was talking about. You, yeah. No. Usually if you go to the OpenGL driver page on the NVIDIA site, they give you the specific version yeah. that has like all the crazy patches that bring them into the conformance. So like access mm-hmm. to this bit of software, like for each of the standards for like Kalata, Vulkan, OpenCL, whatever, could cost you 
back in the day up to about 60 grand. So the fact that this is all being open sourced is super good. And Dave Arley showing up just confirms that it's great news for Mesa because it allow will allow them to churn out driver support a lot faster than they previously were. I remember when every couple of weeks we were talking about what was going on in the Mesa matrix, like, oh, they've finished one extension. Mm -hmm. This is huge news for our 600 users. Now, mm -hmm. hopefully, uh, with the conformance tests being all open source, like, uh, we can, we can get, we can see new open jail drivers in a matter of months as opposed to like the space with a, like a year or a year and a half. It's good time. It's definitely interesting, at least, I, you know, because uh, you and I are both sitting on 980s. I think we're almost at like the 50% mark of saying it might be feasible that our upgrade maybe at the end of 2018 somewhere in there could possibly be AMD. Maybe. Am I crazy? Uh, it's definitely possible. Like I said, I really, I've been saying for a while, I really want to check out those Raven Ridge laptops because mm -hmm. I want to see if, um, the AMD guys have uh, got their shit together or at least the open source AMD guys have gotten their shit together and produced some fun functional drivers that will allow some competition in the graphical space because God damn, it's hard to find a video card these days. Holy shit. Mm hmm. And the biggest problem All with right. AMD hardware is actually the fact that they don't really have anything to compete with anything above the 1080. The Vega 64 matches the 1080 in performance in most tests. The 1080 Ti, though, is still reigning supreme, so they kind of need the high end, too. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens in a couple months when the latest batch of fanboys start making claims about the <laughs> stuff coming out of the rumor mill. And I think that's going to close it off for our news section. Coming up next, it's the Steam Linux. Wait, no, it's just Steamroll. Steamroll. Throwing chairs at it. Oh, yeah, we're, we're, we're getting rolled all right. Not in the fun way. This is Steamroll. It's developed by Antico. It's on, done on the Unreal Engine 4, which is not necessarily a first, but it's a fairly rare occurrence these days to have an Unreal Engine 4 game cross our paths on the chair QA edition. You can pick it up for around uh, 12 of your 12 to 13 of your local sticky currency. What is it? In Steamroll, you are a young engineer on his first day of work and take control of the Scarabius. Scarabus? Scaramooch? Scaramooch? Will you do the Fandango? Uh, the greatest steam fuel vehicle invention while well, you try to survive in a crumbling mine and look for a way out. Steamroll is a puzzle game with a short touch of arcade action and adventure. Devs did send us some keys for this, so thanks a bunch for that. You get to suffer the chair QA edition where we take a game, we look at it, we talk about it, maybe do a little quality assurance that the uh, devs should have done on it before pushing it out to production and give you a final score. One chair means that it's garbage. Two chairs means it's meh. Two chairs means that it's pretty good. Four chairs means it's awesome. We apply those to our categories. Oh, doom. Make what's, makes what the working shiny sounds, controls, and fun. So let us kick this off. Then I hear this thing is great about remembering your preferences. Hey, man, it is definitely 100% a thing. Over here on the um, Humboon 1610 box business, got a 980 in there running a Ryzen 7, but I also do have a UHD monitor running at 2160p, which the thing chugs at a solid 40 at, and you kind of get used to it because um, you can't really put it in windowed mode, even if you do it forgets. So I just uh, accepted my fate, man. Uh, screenshots, they don't work. Uh... It is on real engine. That's kind of neat. Uh, but yeah, I mean, not, not being able to remember the game's resolution and always defaulting to 3840 by 2160. It's kind of junk, man. Uh, when you mix that in with the screenshot, it's not working with the overlay. I mean, it does read like a checklist. What happens when you smash that export button, brah, and just ship your product? What about you, man? Yeah, I mean, Ken confirm doesn't remember your graphical settings at all. I get a little, I get a little bit better performance than you in Intel Land at UHD. I'm getting around 45 to 46 frames a second at UHD with everything on Epic. Because that's the other thing; it defaults to like the highest settings it can run at, which is not necessarily something you want a game to do. But anyways, um, there are a number of technical issues, um, but. The, those are more or less related to the gameplay, so we'll talk about that in a later section. On Fedora 26 64 bit with the i7 6700K and the GTX 980, I'm going to give it three chairs. There's, there's some problems. It needs some time in the oven. What about you, baby? 
Yeah, I I'm usually the one who complains about games not remembering stuff, and it's usually like the controls because that's the first thing I do when I start a new game. I go into the controls menu and I change them. Uh, but more on that later. On this end, though, it did remember the two changes I made to the controls. So something with the graphical settings is not uh, working properly, but it defaulted to 1080p full screen on my end with the uh, Ubuntu 1604 with the GTX 1080 and the Ryzen 5 1600. So I didn't really see a reason to change it, and it held 60 all throughout what I played of it. So I can't really dig at a chair on my end. Four chairs. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, that's uh, three chairs for mixed with the working. Now we move on to the shiny and sounds. Um, yeah, just because it's Unreal Engine 4 doesn't mean it automatically makes with the pretties. I mean, yeah, there are modern textures, they're detailed, they're lit, and the fancy new engine does a bunch of heavy lifting for you, and it looks presentable, but the end result is just kind of meh. Um, I mean, it's it's middling. It, you, you can't just use good graphics as an excuse to slack off on visual and auditory presentation. Speaking of auditory, it's not, there's not really much there. I would, there's nothing in the soundtrack that really stood out. All I remember hearing is the s s from all the steam. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to give it two chairs. It didn't really, uh, didn't really do much for me. What about you, Pedro? Well, uh, I noticed a lot of texture pop in. In fact, I noticed it everywhere. Uh, did you just roll into a new room where the camera pans out to give you a big shot? Texture pop in. Did you just dock into one of the floor circles? Not the orange kind of docking. And the camera, again, pans out to show you an entirely new section of the level. Pop in everywhere. Uh, yeah. Now, the t when the textures have loaded, they look good. The... Music, well, it's uh, exactly what you'd expect from a puzzle game. It's mild and offensive and completely suited to your standard elevator experience, which I guess it's a bit ironic that the first achievement you get is for blowing up an elevator. But eh, as far as I'm concerned, it could get three chairs. Well, if we're going to report on it over here, um, I think it's well done, you know. Uh, I knew it was Unreal Engine 4, texture popping and all that. That's been a thing since Unreal Engine 3. Not seeing the pop-in as bad as Pedro was. It looks like an alright indie puzzle game. You know, it's a double so if you were into the whole steampunk thing when it was a relevant piece of kit, which it no longer is. Um, never tried the sound because it's a puzzle game. And the only way to play a puzzle game is with Slayer because Slayer gets puzzles done. I'll sol solid three on that. <laughs> All right, well, that's two chairs for Shiny and Sounds. Pedro is usually the stickler about control, so we can start this one off. Yeah, controls, they work. It works with the keyboard, it works with the Steam controller, uh, but the physics are a bit of a crapshoot, and controls are only so good as how you interact with your environment. And if the mechanics with which you're interacting aren't really there, then there's an issue. It's quite possible to be completely stuck and have to reload back to the nearest checkpoint uh, because the sh uh, little teeny tiny steam balls that you shoot, their trajectory is a crapshoot. Uh, I'm stuck on the fourth level because I can't seem to get the ball to go across the third pipe, which results in my ability to find the exact amount of power to shoot it for the trajectory to completely change. And it completely changes. It's, if you even so much as touch the scroll wheel, it goes haywire and goes to a completely different place. It doesn't even follow the exact same one that it had before. It's really annoying. Now, working controls are all well and good, but if the physics are trial and error, that doesn't really matter, does it? Two chairs for me. Ben? Over here, man, it worked out of the box with a steam controller, you know, and it gives you a flying spaghetti monster damn direct to ah, trajectory line English. Uh, so it doesn't need to be hella precise. This is something I was going to play with the controller anyway. I uh, can't say anything about the movement since it's kind of designed to be marble madness fuckery with you and all that. And it, it worked well enough. It, that's a mechanic. Basically, camera is, however, just a bit shite. Going to say that, man. But, I mean, it's better than just passing. I was able to accomplish what I set out to do. So I'll give it a solid three on that. 
Oh yeah, no, that camera is bad because all you can really do is change like you can get like a sweeping shot of the area, which isn't really useful because sometimes you just want to see how an area is laid out and doesn't really let you do that. Yeah, um, this uh, again, it might have been designed to be fucky, but that's not really a great excuse. So I actually got to level six before I just got tired of the game. Um, and yeah, the, 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 the trajectory line is kind of nice because at least you can sort of reliably, uh, aim your ball, but like Pedro mentioned, it is on a fucking hair trigger. Um, I, I remember spending, I, th- I was like the second or third level. I spent like a good 15 minutes just like trying to find the exact place that would allow me to do the exact ricochet I needed to go hit a button. Cause I saw it once I shot it, the game glitched and then I had to restart the level. So trying, trying to recreate that was really, really, really painful. And I am not a fan of that. Um, there's also an issue I found where periodically it will just lock. Uh, I, I didn't try this with the controller at all. Cause I just played, I just tapped the keyboard. Oh, Hey, it does a thing. Um, but there is an issue where, uh, at least on separate X screens, I'm not sure if this happens, uh, with like twin view or whatnot. If I accidentally move my mouse outside of the, um, the range of the window and pull, pull it back in sometimes, but not always, it'll lock me to mouse movement. And I got to right click. If I want to get the WASD arrow key aiming back, there's, there's some issues here. I'm going to give that two chairs mm-hmm. and that gives uh, the control segment uh, about two chairs. So to put a bow on it, Ven, did you have fun? I think what we have here is um, a half decent puzzle game. It's clunky, manageable interface. Uh, Got to admit that price to sell twelve ninety nine. This is not the brand new game. It came back in twenty sixteen. We just always like to check out things that are on Unreal Engine four, and this is one we missed. Uh, good graphics, mm-hmm. decent performance. If you run it at ten eighty p, got to give it that. Um, However, all those good things are kind of shot in the junk because you also have a Linux port that was not tested at UHD displays or multiple X sessions, um, well, X screens, whatever you want to call it, and not testing UHD support by 2018. I mean, this is something that should have went back and got addressed, man, even in 2016. Um, doesn't remember the screen resolutions. Uh, doesn't remember if you want to launch it in windowed mode. That's the thing. I mean, despite all that, managed to crawl my way to about the fourth map, chugging along at 45 FERPs at a time. Um, yeah, moral of the story is just developers, you know what? Please test your shite. That goes double. So if you're going to be using Unreal Engine 4, it's not busted. I didn't hate it. Too much needs to be fixed to give it a recommendation. But I'll say two chairs because it technically works. Uh, yeah, this is fucking mini golf, which is the bane of my goddamn existence. You can check out some of our golf with, golf with friends streams to just see a sampling of how much I love this style of game. Who boy, at least the game is nice enough to give you, to let you know where your shot is going before you shoot. And it's relatively reliable. So that's the thing. And you know what? The game isn't actually that horrible. The puzzles aren't entirely horseshit. They require a modicum of thought, but they're not crazy difficult. It's just a matter of making the little steam cannon do what you want. And there's even, and there's even some variety. You can try and reduce the number of steps and resources you use to solve the puzzle to the bare minimum. And that, that is actually a little fun. Um, but the game really does have some issues though, and it would benefit from a lot more time in the oven and a lot more testing. So who made this freaking turd? Was it, um, Antico? Uh, yeah, Ant- Antico, Antico, you need to spend a little more time queuing your game, and uh, may- maybe you would have had something not necessarily worth three chairs, but the upper end, the two. Yeah, now you just definitely. Get now I like puzzle games. I do. It's uh, it's one of those genres that I can sit down and enjoy. It's not my favorite genre, but. Games like Steven's Sausage Roll prove that even the simplest concept can make for a really enjoyable experience with some motherfucking hard puzzles. Steamroll has an even higher potential of being awesome. The graphics look all right, if you don't mind the texture popping. Uh, the music is acceptable. The controls even work about as well as you can expect. But the nail in this physics puzzler 
is the uh, trial and error physics. There is no rhyme or reason uh, for why the aiming system sa says that the ball is going to go a certain way, and when you shoot it, it doesn't. I've had that happen more than once. Uh, when why at 60 uh, 76 percent power would it go exactly where you want it to but even if you so much as look at your scroll wheel the wrong way and it comes down to 75 percent it goes completely off and then you can never get right back to that exact point that the ball just goes and that's when it fucks up even more because sometimes the trajectory thing is completely inconsistent it's impossible to replicate a certain path that it shows you no matter how careful you are. So for me, it gets one chair. Interestingly enough, I, that, to your last point, Pedro, once I figured out what I needed to do, I never had a problem recreating specific shots. Mm -hmm. So I think I you're maybe just a little soft I, in the head. If, you, if you're looking at the video right now, you can see me try, desperately try. I did that the first go. <laughs> Yeah, so, soft, soft in the head. So that's one chair for fun. Two chairs for total. It means not sure if want. I would say um, maybe give this one a pass until they come up with some updates. I don't think uh, we'll be seeing any updates issues, from this. Fixing. This definitely looks like something that has uh, been updated. All oh, is it going to get, man? So yeah, seems legit. Click export, one and done. Mm. All right. Uh, uh, all right. Uh. Well, coming up next, we got some hate mail, and then who knows? Maybe we'll ascend to higher life forms. And then, I don't know, we'll probably just still end up doing this podcast, anyways. Well, you made it all this way. You probably did. YouTube statistics say you probably didn't. But hey, it's that time that you probably have something to say. We probably said something in either the steam news the regular news the review and it made you really angry and you're really pissed off and you'd like to take your frustrations out on some assholes on the internet so by all means i mean we are the cause of that frustration right because if not i mean you can still rat at us more than happy to have it go to linuxgamecast.com hit the contact button fill out the form make sure to pick lgc weekly from the little drop down thing it's pretty easy, and we will be more than happy to um, fuel your fire. Hey, man, yeah. do that. Maybe if you got some <laughs> thoughts, hints, allegations, anything you want to throw at us, we'd be happy. We do live off of your feedback this week. Um, we only got one little piece coming in, and that's somebody trying to remind you, oh, that somebody is Katana, that something on mm -hmm. this show was wrong. He writes, you know... About the open the open motherfucker, re -imple, uh <laughs> comma. I truly hope they leave the car physics alone slash true to the original. It's 1930s cars. It's not like they were feather light. They need to feel heavy. The camera controls on the on the hand have at it. Uh, <laughs> so open motherfucker was the um Mafia re-implementation. Ma mafia. mafia. Re yeah. Yeah, so that that's a thing. Pedro, you said it, uh, what was just the cars handled like shit, right? Well, the entire game handles like shit. Uh, the characters, uh, even after you've stopped uh, pushing the forward button, it still moves around a little bit, and then it stops. And the cars, it, it was just, outright impossible it was actually faster to get from one place to another on foot than if you actually stole a car uh and it was not forgiving uh in the same way that gta ever was but yeah i had issues with mafia i could never really get into it but uh it's just nice to see that that's where katana draws the line it's uh Oh no, the car physics you you leave those alone the camera on the other hand yeah <laughs> Oh no, man! Uh, wasn't Mafia? Was it in the Paradox bundle, or was that Mafia Two or something? Uh, I think no, that was, was Mafia, Mafia Two. two like, I think, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 OG Mafia is old. I don't think it's going to be in any bundles. Yeah, unless it's like a nostalgia bundle. Two? Hmm. Two thousand? Yeah, two thousand one, two thousand two. That area might be able to dig it up on um like good old games or something like that for the um oh, yeah, data oh, files. Right. 
That's uh, what I use GOG for. I would actually use it more if you'd release your damn client on Linux, but, you know, that's the thing. Mm-hmm. And yeah, maybe, uh, maybe get that incremental update. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe. I think that'd definitely be a lot of... Uh, Mafia on GOG. You can pick it up for, wow, 20 bucks? Hot damn. Hmm. Well, it looks like <laughs> I won't be playing that anytime soon. That's a... Uh, yeah, five thousand percent on that. I'm not paying twenty bucks for a yeah. game from two thousand and two. I know it was two thousand two was the release date. <laughs> yeah. Anywho, yeah. yeah. Moral moral of the story: Don't pay twenty bucks for a game we're going to use for engine reimplementations. Unless it's Morrowind, because OpenMW needs your support so that we can have Open Skyrim in fifty million years. Come on, guys, do it. <laughs> It'll definitely be a thing. Because you know what, beautiful people. On that bombshell, let's cue the music. You can always find us around 9.30 Eastern Moon Time when everything is on fire and exploding like it did this evening, but we're used to it. We soldier Sally Forth and all that fun stuff. You can get a hold of me at Vinstone on the Twitters, plus Vinstone, or just Google. I actually told somebody that in the parking lot the other day because he stopped and he's like, hey man, I take pictures of people. I'd like to take your picture and model type stuff. And I was like, just search for Vinstone. I gotta go. Bye bye. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I am not pretty enough to be a part-time model, but you can find me on the Twitter or on Google Plus breaking people's legs because they're not giving me my goddamn money. Akam. Akam, the burning fool on Twitter, or plus Jordan Spung on the Google Akam. Akam, indeed. I, on the other hand, am very comfortable with the way I look, how big my schlong is. I am comfortable with myself. If I could change anything, I'd probably like some bionic fingers to, uh, you know, improve my right hand and its asymmetry to my left one. But you can find me at unaccounted for on Twitter or plus with those on Google Plus. All right, um, we learned that. Uh, trust me, do, doing what we do is uh, a fine mixture of Scandinavian witchcraft and black magic fuckery. And it will bite us on occasion like it did this evening. Thanks for sticking with us, beautiful people. And uh, hopefully you're about to see your name in the credits. Oh, yeah. If not, you can give us money. And then your name will be in the credits. Isn't that, isn't that great how that works? Well, that's true. Basically, if you can come up with the single most offensive, most, you know, that kind of name that gets you in trouble, it'll be on the credits. Yeah. So yeah, you have that going for you. <laughs> hey man. Oh, maybe Charter. I hope Charter's just being dumb and fucking with me because it took him about a week before they updated their rate card to even give me a hundred down. Damn. What are you getting up? Oh, I only get seven up, but I got a hundred and. 124 down right now. Yeah, it's not too bad. That's not too bad, but I want the 400. But I don't give a shit about the 400. I want the two mm -hmm. up. It will give these beautiful, beautiful people more stuff. That that stuff. that 4K stream. <laughs> oh. See us all in our horrific glory. I didn't just give both of you guys just like straight up video back. None of this hangout clued shit that we've been doing for five years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kludgy, but it bougies five dudes. <laughs> <laughs>